please, even if your kids are making noise, please allow them to make noise. They are entitled to it. I'm used, I'm used to it. I want to welcome you to the service of Lent. Thank you very much. This is Idikai Mary. I am a bishop to a lot of pastors and to those of you who are bishops. I am your archbishop and I thank you very much for following my spiritual leadership and direction. Today, Ash Wednesday, we began our 40-day fasting. For those of you who are in the small circle, I will urge you to do the complete 40-day fasting. For those who are covenant partners and friends of the ministry, please try and and join us as we do the um, as we do. Uh, we will meet every Wednesday and every Friday twice, that's 12 noon and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, just as we begin today. But those of you in the small circle and those of you who are um, uh, who are very close to the things that are extraordinary and uncommon, try and go through the exercise with me. Um, for those of you who are in the small circles, I will write to you personally. I will email you and text you and tell you what is in store for you during this time. They are not for public consumption, but they are for you as someone who is in the small circle. You are quite different. They are classes of people in what I do. All right, let's go on. In the afternoon session, we had a two hour service. That two hour service was done purposely to cover everything that we are going, it's, it's a summary. It's like when you read the first sentence of any book of the Bible, that also, that also is a summary of what the entire book is about. That's just it. Now let's go. I would like um, the reader to read to us from the book of Isaiah. Please read it aloud and tell us the chapter and the verses you are reading from. And after that, the next reader will read from um, Matthew, um, uh, the gospel appointed for this evening. But before we do that, uh, Victoria, will you tell us all the readings for today? So that those of you who want to spend some time to reflect on this readings. Remember, faith comment by hearing. Hearing by hearing by hearing the word of God. I also added my own. Power comes from meditation. Meditation by the same word of God. That's it. So, yeah, two different things. So, Vicky, tell us, tell us something about the Lent and uh, how we'll be reading. First, tell us the readings for this uh, for today, all of them, and then you tell us what Lent is all about and how we'll be doing it. Go ahead. Okay, the readings for Ash Wednesday today, you would read from Joel chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, and 12 through 17. Isaiah, Chapter 28, verse 1 through 12. Psalm, Psalm 51, verse 1 through 17. Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 20, all the way through chapter 6, verse 10. And then the gospel would be Matthew, chapter 6, verse 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Thank you. And 
can you tell us about the readings that are online for us on our website? Okay. Um, if you go to the website, idikaimary.com, Idika and Mary, all Idika, the readings that Idika, you Idika, can participate every single day. Idika and Mary Ministry, mm -hmm. the one that says Idika and Mary Ministry dot com. Yes. Okay. Right there, you will find all the readings you can read during the Lenten season, and all you got to do is just tap on it, and you have them right there at your fingertips. You don't even need to open your Bible. Just touch, just touch the like today is March 6, Ash Wednesday. You just touch it and it will come up. Like the, the Christian festivals, will not you will not see the, the reading, but all you need to do is tap, tap it, it will come up. And the one that you see the reading, you also tap it, and the entire thing will come up for you. Go ahead, yeah. So, um. As a ministry, we're going to be fasting, praying, and participating in these supernatural power conferences together and meditating and all kinds of good things on the website. Um, if you go check it out, there's all kinds of different um, things that you can learn and read about. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying to do that. Good. Thank you very much. Let us hear from you, Miss Jessica. The entire world will hear your voice. Isaiah 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sin. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? But you do not see. Why humble ourselves? But you do not notice. Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked sin. Such fasting as we do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in a sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I want um, 
uh, Victoria, I want you to uh, go back to that book of Isaiah and um, you, you are going to repeat that reading very fast because I'm going to point out things very quickly. I'm going to show you things that you should not, things that you shouldn't do when you engage in supernatural exercise from that. It's because uh, Jessica is with kids. That's why I do not want to bother her going through this. So Victoria, you will do that. If not, then my Barbara, you can help out too, okay? Where is Barbara? Yeah. So we can do that. Let's share the gospel for tonight. is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Shante, open that portion because tonight we are looking at the do's and don'ts of fasting and prayer. Amen. Please keep it in front of you. Victoria, do you have the Isaiah ready to go? Okay, we have to go very, very fast because we don't want to be here. I personally will need to finish it quick and go and eat and start getting prepared for tomorrow and for the rest of the day. Okay. There are things that you shouldn't do when you fast, when you pray, and there are things that you should do. We want to go very fast for you to know. In the New Testament, there are no strict rules concerning money and fasting. There are no strict rules about three things in the New Testament, and they are prayer, fasting, and money. There were no doctrines put out there. You have to read it closely to find out what fits you and then you embrace it. I will start by telling you one strong thing. Let go of religion and Christian practices or religious practices 
that has never worked for you. Just let it go. I followed the guy I call my boss who lives in Africa and is in charge of all the reformed churches in the whole of Africa, entire Africa. He travels around the African continents and the world. Why? I follow him because he was willing to share with me the secrets of Jesus. That's number one. Number two, the secrets of success. When I am to enter into different cycles is from him. Others never wanted to show me none of it. If they knew it, they never showed me. They were selfish. People want to preach to me, to teach me, to tell me how to, but they never want to hold my hand and tell me, son, sit down, watch me. See what I do. See, people want to tell you about how they become billionaires and millionaires. But they do not want to hold your hand and tell you, sit down, watch me. This is how I really do it. All that I was just talking. But this is really how it happens. Let's go. Vicky, run for it. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people the rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Stop there. Stop there. Those who either God called them, or the institutional, organized, or independent churches call them. If you say, that you follow the God of the Bible. Let's say you only follow God the Father. Because in the Old Testament, they only followed God the Father. But they had no idea that they were following God the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. But in the New Testament, you have the fullness of God, the fullness of the Trinity. If you say that you represent him in this physical planet, there's going to be a place where you are going to be prophetical. You're going to speak out. You're going to tell people things are not being done right. Things must be done right. In fasting and prayer, you see, I am not so much of a traditionalist although I come from that background and where appropriate, I am in it and through it, I point people to the realities of who the Father is and the King, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Mine is actually about the practical aspect, the Pentecostal aspect of the Old and New Testament, the life, the power side of Christianity. That is what I'm interested in. It might not be noisy, except when I'm ministering to people one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, or in a crowd. Announce, raise your voice. Let the people know. Read that verse one again. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Say, Announce to my people the rebellion to the house of Jacob their sins. There you go. Rebellion and sinfulness. And let me also let you be aware the refusal to pursue, to use your gift and talent, or to develop one or two, and apply them to solving problems on earth and be rewarded is a sin. 
the refusal to pursue money and material resources in order for you to be happy is a sin. The refusal to go into government and represent people and you allow evil people to take over government is a sin. If you are sick and you pray to God, the sickness remain. If you refuse to go to the hospital for doctors to see you and treat you, and you die as a result of ignorance, it is a sin. If you stay in a marriage that is an evil marriage, no profit, no building of an accumulation of wealth and resources that will sustain life, and you stay there to play religion, you stay there to do marriage, you do not move on. It is a sin, big time. If you decide to love people who hate you, it is a sin. Do not practice that kind of foolish religion. To love people who hate you, who want to kill you, it is a sin. I'm pointing this thing out to you. And I'm going to go straight. We might repeat this. Never bring any homeless person into your home. Never practice, even if you hear Jesus say it, and uh, you hear you hear it in the Old Testament, which you will hear very soon, that you shall share your bread with the hungry and uh, bring the uh, the homeless, the strangers to your home. Do not practice it. Those were things that were done in village times where everybody knows everybody. Don't do it. There are certain laws of God that if you do it, it will backfire on you. And somebody will kill you because you are trying to keep to the laws of God. Don't be stupid. God is not stupid. Please write it down. It's a powerful key. Don't be stupid. God is not stupid. There are certain things of the Bible that apply in certain generations. And in other generation, it's absolute. You don't, it's just obsolete. You don't do them anymore. You can now transfer them in a different way. For example, all of us are enjoying church without nobody coming inside the church to come, to come and kill us. We turn on our phone, call in, and have church. It's the same thing. Continue, 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 Vicky. Okay. Right to know my so stop there. Stop there. Do not practice religious practices that day after day you want to, you, you, you are devoted. You try to make people know you are devoted. You try to know God. There's a difference between trying to know God, which is what, which is what the religious people devote themselves to do, is to try to worship a particular God or goddess or the God who made the heavens and the earth. They delight, they, they, they want to know his ways. They, but when God shows up and shows them his way, they don't want not, nothing to do with it. They love the ceremony, but they don't want God. They don't, they don't want the center of the ceremony. Empty services, empty mouth. I'm telling you what not to do. God doesn't want people who are rebellious, stubborn, and people whom, if he point out something they are doing that is wrong, they will not change. The reason God make effort to go to some people and reveal himself is because he's already seen in them that they will be willing to change. That's why David could shed blood and get away with it, because he was willing to change. Saul mocked God mocked Samuel the prophet and never gotten away with it. He became a mental case. Just want you to know the differences. If God asks you, stop what you are doing, this is the way you should go. Please go. One of the things God is teaching me is never to waste my time with people who want to give me advice. 
And when you trust them with things for them to do for you, suddenly they quit. People who quit easily are not to be my friends. People who are judgmental should not come near me. They should go very far away. And anybody in your life that is judgmental, let them cut them loose. There's nothing you are going to gain from it. Another thing I want to tell you is, anybody who is too much of a teacher, whenever they see you, they want to teach you something. They want to tell you oh, what you are doing, the way you eat, the way you do this, the way uh, they want to tell you how much toothpaste you should use on to toothbrush. Toothpaste that is a dollar in Dollar Tree. People who think that they are born to be teachers. You take them out to go and eat. Instead of them eating the tasty and nice food, they want to analyze and criticize the food. You don't need them. People who, if you give them money, tomorrow you ask them, where is that money? What are you doing with it? Have you put it in your bank? That money is gone. You need to cut them loose. If they don't know how to invest money, you don't need them. If they need money just to do their hair, do their nails and eat, you don't need them. These are all signs of people who don't want to move and to become somebody. These are all signs. A lot of people want to go to church, want to go to the mosque, want to go to the temple and shrines. But do they really want the God? Are they really devoted? No. But it seems like it. Continue to read. As if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? But you do not see. Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day okay. and oppress all your workers. Okay, you see, he's even talking about business. You, you bring God into business. You don't pay them. You don't pay those who work for you the right wages. Those of you who work for me, or those of you who I come to give you workers, you know that we start them good. But they have to earn it. Ask Victoria. Ask Mary. Ask Geneva. Ask Rosalind. Ask Jessica, Liz, they will tell you, we are fair, we compensate. See, religious people ask, why do we fast? Why do we pray? And God doesn't hear us. And God is pointing out why. He's even taking them to the business place. What they did in their business places is affecting them in their religious places. The way they treat their workers has made God, see, in fasting, you are looking for the four coverings of God. And God is saying, you can do all the fast you want. I've removed those four coverings, which are the blessings, his presence, his innocency, and the joy is removing. And these things are not concept. They are not just spiritual concepts. These are also physical, tangible things. Our job as practitioners of the art of God, our job is not to sell you what you cannot see for cheap money. Our job is to turn the supernatural into tangible and physical things you can touch with your hand that solves problems. That's what we really do. Preaching is very little, tiny aspect. Teaching is very little, tiny aspect of what it means to be a person that is devoted to God. 
Very tiny. Continue. So what you may be doing out there might be affecting you where you are. Because that was what was happening to the people. God wasn't showing up. The blessing was not flowing. The joy wasn't there. They were not innocent. Continue, my dear. Okay, so 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 when they are when, even when they fast, they are quarreling and fighting, physical fighting among each other, which means in their religious setup they were in cliques and gangs and, and classes and all kind of stuff. It was for competition. Is God for competition? Go to marriages, you see it. Money for competition, God for competition, children for competition. And they begin to fight over the profit of marriage, which some of them never even contributed nothing. That's why I don't blame some of you. You make more money. And the other person come in with nothing. Go through the Bible. There was nobody who came into a marriage with nothing. And many of us want to end where we didn't sow. We want to reap where we did not sow. We think that when you tell somebody, I love you, that qualifies that person to, to give you money that you never worked for. You've not done anything for that person. You come in with empty bag and that person is already set up everything. And you come in there to command this one. And watch out what I'm about to tell you. Those who come into relationship and marriages empty, they are the ones who are going to cause you the most headache. The person that you earn more money than that person, the inferior is going to cause you more headache than you think. You are trying to play love. That's why, that's why in relationship they ask you to sign the paper, to make it official. Sign! And you think that it's about God. You are doing it for God. Fool, you are not doing it for God. You are doing it for yourself. You are doing it for the development of the country in which you are. Let me tell you, do you know why they ask people to sign? To sign the marriage paper to make it official? Why you and the man sign? And they are witnesses? And then there is a notary or a judge or whoever or the, or the minister or the priest or whatever or the pastors. Or those who, do you know why they ask them to sign it? Anybody tell me. Why do they ask you to sign the paper? For the marriage to be official. Why do you have to sign a paper? For those of you who think it's a spiritual thing. Till death do not do us part. We part right now. If it's not working. Tell my colleague that that is the way I rule. Do you know why they ask you to sign the paper? They are telling you that what you are entering is a business. If you didn't know it, hear it from me for the first time. They are telling you that that relationship you are about to start with that man or that woman is a business contract. We are done with the spiritual side. Now you are to do. You are to do the physical side. The business side of it. The legal side of it. Sign! That's why. It's a contract. It's a business contract. Divorce is relationship goes go, gone bankrupt. If you don't know it. <laughs> Write it down. That's a powerful key. I love it. Divorce is relationship gone bankrupt. Go and find out. You will know that I'm very smart. The Holy Spirit makes me smart. <laughs> Divorce is relationship gone bankrupt. And that is why you want to you wanna be out of it. You have to go back to where you signed the contract to get out of it. Is that not way? Do you not go to the court to get out of it? Yes, you do. Because you went to the court to get into it. 
So, so you didn't know that it was a business contract and that it has to do with land. It has to do with houses. It has to do with the accumulation of wealth. If both of you are poor and broke, then there's nothing there to contest. You have nothing to contest. Why do people contest their marriage? Why do they contest it? Because children are born into it. That's profit. Houses were buy into it. That's profit. Money has been made into it. That's profit. That's the only thing people contest. Where there is no child, where there are no houses, no land, no property, no money, Nobody contests about it. The poor broke man pick his useless luggage, enter Greyhound bus station and leave. Leave the woman there to keep paying the rent and the woman look side and nobody to help. She has to pick her own and leave. Why? Because there's nothing there to fight over. People don't fight over where there is nothing. And they just look at it and stand, bah, bah, divorce over. In fact, each of them will not even want the divorce. They are not interested in it. But they don't even have money to go and pay to get out of it. <laughs> so they just leave it like that for years. <laughs> if you didn't know, know that you are signing a paper because it is assumed that in that relationship you are going to accumulate wealth. There are legal things that are going to come up in terms of money and material resources and children. And you have that paper signed to back what you are doing. To give it legal right and approval to do it. And for many of you who think, oh, you sign the paper and you go before the pastor to go and vow that you are doing it in order not to sin of having sex, you are deceiving yourself. You must be the biggest fool in the world to think that way. Because that's what many of you we're running away from. Show me. 100% of all of you who were running away from having sex. That's why you want to get married. Are you still in the marriage? No. Many of you who receive prophecies to be in a marriage. Are you still in the marriage? No. That tells you that these things are earthly things. Backed by heavenly power. Continue to read, my dear. Okay. Such fasting, such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Okay. When there is a fight going on in families, uh, among Christian people, do you think that the Spirit of God will come in? God will come to bless your fasting? Nope. Competition? Nope. I'm not talking of a main healthy competition that you want to produce better cars than the other one. That's different. You want to build better houses than the other one. That's different. That's not what we are talking about here. Unhealthy rivalry. Continue, my dear. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Okay. Is it to bow is it to bow down the head like a bulrush? Okay, listen to this. Okay, listen to this. God is telling us that he needs humility. If you want your fast and prayer to be recognized, you must become humble and not arrogant. That's why when it comes to really devotedness to God, you come in every day into God's presence as though you've never known him. I'm serious. Because you are expecting something completely new. And God is warning us against traditions of men, doctrines of men. We must wear black clothes, put ashes on our head, bow our head on the floor. All those kind of gymnastics, religious gymnastics. To show that we are religious, we are holy. How much rosary have you prayed? If you are a Catholic, or how much beads have you counted? If you are a Muslim or Eastern Orthodox, have they worked? I don't think so. How, how many cents have you prayed to? 
Has it worked? How many angels have you appealed to? Has it worked? I'm alive today because I believe in medicine. And I'm alive today because I believe in the Holy Ghost. I'm alive today because of what Jesus has done for me. I'm alive because I have a God who is called the Ancient of Days. I'm alive because I have people who loves me and who cares about me, who are very nice to me. That's it. I'm not alone. I'm not complete on my own. I need others to complete me. And God is saying, I don't want all these trashy traditions. Carrying crosses, wearing crosses, doing this. I'm not saying that if that helps you to become real and you are not faking it, you are not just doing a show, good for you. There are times when those traditions are necessary to point people to the real thing. I use every opportunity that I practice our religious traditions to point people to the real thing. That's my job. And God is saying that they do all these ceremonies and he's not part of it. He's not in it. They are doing their own thing. Please, if you are sleeping, leave the line. Leave the line if you are sleeping. Thank you. Who is that? Continue, continue, Vicky. Okay. Would you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of injustice? Okay, lose the bond. Lose the bonds of injustice. Listen. Deliverance. That's what fasting is about. Deliverance. Continue. The tongues of the yoke, remove yoke. Still deliver people, give people back their lives. Come and get back your life. That's what fasting is about. Go ahead. To let the oppressed go free. Give people their freedom. For them to become creative, for them to become successful. Go ahead. And to break every yoke. To break every yoke. That's what real fasting is about. Break every yoke. If you don't have a job, you must get a job. You stay there until you get one. Until God tells you you are getting one. If you need healing, you stay there until he tells you I've healed you. Then you can go. You need a car, you stay there until you see the car. If they don't manifest, don't leave. Stay there. Continue. Okay. Is see, see, you see. Hungry, have you seen you what real food? fasting should produce? Deliverance. Freedom. No more pressure. No more oppression. Have what you, what you want. Be happy. That's what real fasting should produce. Okay, continue. And bring the homeless poor into your house. No, no, no. Read the other one. What was the other one? Okay. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? The day that you fast, is it not for you to share the bread with the hungry? All this, what she's going to read, when you see homeless people, show them the homeless shelter, let them go there. Shanta, am I right in what I'm saying? Yes. Good. You are not to share your bread with the hungry in our generation. Point them to the shelter. Let them go there. They are feeding people there. Let them go there and get fed. It's not your job to give people money. Show them where the shelter is. Let them go there and eat. They will have a place to sleep. Fin finish the whole statement so that I can tell you guys. Because, because some people are religious fanatics and they want to obey these scriptures. And then you get killed. You get killed by homeless people and by bad people. 
Let me tell you, if somebody is writing to you on Facebook and Twitter and other places and other social media and telling you that, oh, they need to take their child to the hospital, oh, they themselves need to go to the day now, they know that because you are Christian, you can help, send them money. Please do not send money to anyone you do not personally, face to face, no. Do not send money to someone that you do not face to face know. In case anything happens, you tell the police that person lives that there. There is their house. They, that person lives there. This is their social security number, their driver's license number. This is their real full name. Because many of you have done that and it has landed you in deep trouble. You have to be aware of this. Stop giving your money to people that you don't know in the name of Christianity. Pastors that you don't know in the name of God. Please stop it. It's a sin. There are pastors who already have two or three airplanes and they are coming to ask you for money. And don't be an idiot to be giving your money to people who are already rich and very wealthy. Barbara, are you listening? Yes, I am. Good. Many of you, many of you, the money you should send to my ministry, you are dividing it into many, many to be sending to people, thinking that the blessing is going to come from other places. You are wasting your time. God sees it as rebellion if you didn't know it. You are sending money to pastors who are practicing witches and warlocks. Greedy people. I know those, if you have one airplane, that should be enough. Some are so greedy. The money that they should have used to, to build new hospitals equipped with medicine, they want to buy another plane. And they come to you to ask you for more money. You think the rest of us are stupid? God will not just punish them. He will also punish you for being so ignorant. Because ignorant of the law is not an excuse. We have them all over Nigeria and Ghana and South Africa. Miss Vivian, what is happening to many of them nowadays? What, what, are, what is happening to them? The, the law is catching up with them. Am I right? There you go. What are you doing with five airplanes? What are you doing with it? Even those who are rich in the Western world, they have one plane. That's enough. What are you doing with five? You are from a third world country. You don't even have good road to the house where you live. There is no proper university well equipped no good clinic for women to come and give birth. None. You want to fly more planes. For what? That's what God is talking about. And they come to preach to you and you go to listen to those crap. See, fasting is to make you strong, not soft. You are not to be soft-minded. Somebody come to you, eh, I need food to eat. I have not eaten on the road and you take five dollar gift to, I used to do those things I was I was taking a walk in the night and one guy and I stopped by the gas station to get me to get me um orange juice and a guy saw me eating drinking orange juice as I was taking my walk and I was also praying hey, sir please can you can you spare me um can you spare me a quarter I say I myself I'm looking for a dollar <laughs> You're looking for a quarter? I'm looking for a dollar. He looked at me, his eyes was big, like some 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 round bubble something. He looked at me, he said, This guy? You're looking for a dollar? I said, Oh yeah. Do you have some to give to me? I said, How much have you baked and got today? Can you share some with me? How much have you gotten today from everybody? You don't want to have a job. What's wrong with you, dude? What's wrong with you? Are you blind? Are you deaf? Are you dumb? 
Are you paralyzed? Do you have a mental problem? No, sir. So why are you asking me for a quarter? You want my money to go and use and sex and go and use and buy your drugs and buy your alcohol and gamble and also other, other people steal from them. They steal from each other. Don't be stupid. God is not stupid. There are people who don't want to pay bills. That's why they are out there begging for money. Here in Wichita, Kansas, in Las Vegas, you see people holding holding a um, signboard. Please buy me a beer. Shouldn't they be at their job? They are standing on the road with signboard. Please buy me a beer. For them to become more drunk and more stupid. And people go to give them money, not me. How fasting makes you to be smart and strong and not weak and timid and people want to use you. If God ever loves a human being, he has to love me because I still have conscience. Don't think that there will be sometime that I will have five airplanes unless they have an airline for people to borrow and travel and make us money. That's different. You can look at some of them who tell you that they build universities. They are building a university. Do they, do they have one quality medical facility? A medical center, medical training center to train new medical doctors? None. So art courses, literature, economics, politics. Is that what we are going to eat? Not even a solid good law school. Not one. Not one good formidable business school. Not one. And they tell you they have they have all those all those what do we call them? Um uh, uh, Mary, what do we call those kind of touch houses? They think by putting up some building that that is a university. Nothing. And you're going to pay the money for your children to go to those places. We have Ivy League schools here in America. We have quality top schools around the world. Germans everywhere. Britain. Not all those things they have out there. Politicians from a lot of countries, they make me sick. They are not under oppression by the white man anymore. And yet they cannot even help their own people. Please continue. And those are the people who fill churches. Who shout the most and dance and come to display their wealth. No, no road. No good infrastructure, no good structures. Those are the people. Continue, my dear. When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kids. Show them, show them where Salvation Army is. That's my interpretation of it. Show them where the Salvation Army is and goodwill and all those places. Your job is not to give people clothes. If you want to go, give it to an organization who can handle it. And let them write you a receipt that you gave. If you want to put it in for your tax, that's fine. But not to individual. Don't invite people to your homes. Don't do it. To come and get stuff. Do not do it. I don't want anybody to get you killed. There are too many mad, crazy, mental people out there. If you see any sign of mental problem in somebody, please beware. Take the person in for treatment. If you want somebody like me to be involved, I myself, I practice both medicine and spirit. I'll combine both until the person is healed completely. 
and then they go on their way to get a job and live their life. Continue. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn. If you do this thing, your light, your light will break out. You begin to shine. Your day, your day will break out. You'll have day, not night anymore. Continue. And your healing shall spring forth quickly. Your healing will spring forth. You will have you are, you begin your shining will be returned back to you, and your healing will happen quickly. Go ahead. God will vindicate you. He'll become, God will become the God of, you put your name there, the God who, vindic who vindicates, you put your name, who vindicated the Kaiberi, because you've done the right thing, the smart thing. Go ahead. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. The heaviness of God will come upon you so that anything you ask in fasting will be accomplished. Continue. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. That's when fasting comes with answer. Continue. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. God will always show up. That's the presence of God. Continue, continue. Forget about the noise of the children. If you remove the yoke from among you, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Speaking of evil. Mm -hmm. Pointing of the finger, judge, judgment, judgmental spirit, judgmental spirit, selfish spirit. And what again? If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, mm -hmm. then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The group, the, there was something about the pointing of the finger. There was one before. The, oh, I'm sorry. Speaking of evil, betraying each other, biting each other, not wanting good things to happen to others, judgment, pointing of fingers, judgmental spirit. What was the first one? The yoke. The yoke. Not putting problems on people. You see problem and you go and bring it. Anybody who keep bringing you problem, you should let them go. Stay with people who keep bringing you prosperity and success. Not with people who keep bringing you problems. You see, in our ministry, there have never been a time that we that I sent out a letter. And I said, you, you must pay $1,000. You, you must pay $5,000. You, you must pay. Everything is voluntary. There's, there's nothing like I sent out a letter and even make you to pledge. I don't even make people to pledge. No. I don't. Go go to churches and find out. Those of you who think that I'm tough, go to churches and see whether they will have time to even talk to you. The pastors don't have no time for you. Not only that, if you don't pay your tithes and your offering, you're in big trouble. Do you see me worry you if you don't pay tithe and offering? Have I ever called you to ask you what's going on with your finances? That's the last thing I'll ever do. Till Jesus comes back. I will never ask you. Never. It must come from you. There are many of you, you stop going to church because the pastor went and preached about you. That you are broke. Or this and that. You did this. They caught you doing this. You are this. They put laws all over you. You are not free. That's what God is talking about. Church laws. Human laws. So that you live in fear. You can't be yourself. They put bondage on people. And many of us start to tap into that and start putting bondage on each other. Continue, 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 continue. Okay. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted... Well, if there is a natural disaster, go to an organization that is known that they are going to handle that money very well. Now, don't contribute to Salvation Army anymore. 
because of how how they if you contribute big if you contribute money to them 99% of that money is not going to natural disaster you should know that so you have to read and know which one actually who are the people who actually are going to do the job but that you are not asked to go and do it yourself find others who are already into it and 90% of that money will go for that project will go to the people. That's why I do not support people who will tell you, oh, they are going to Latin and South and Central America, to the Spanish-speaking country, they are going to Africa and Caribbean to go and do mission work. I tell them, have you finished the mission work in America and Canada and in Europe, and you are going to African people? You want cheap way to make money. Come on, give me a break, dude. You want a cheap way to add to use poor people to add something to your resume to look good. To collect money in millions and give them $500. I know this for a fact. And the stupid people in third world country think that you are coming to do good things for them. And they don't know you are coming to use them. And you don't really care about them anyway. I was at the ordination of some Roman Catholic priests, and they have some uh, some bishops from uh, from from Europe who came to ordain them. After the ordination, I was walking along, and I and I saw these those bishops that came to ordain them, and they were mocking them. I'm serious; they were mocking those they ordained. I heard what they were saying; they were mocking them. <laughs> They were the one who had then made. They were mocking them, saying, "Look at them! Look at this! Look at those people!" And I was listening, and I behaved like I wasn't. Have no respect whatever for you, for who you are. My mission is the in the United States, and from here to around the world. Continue. Then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. You will have perpetual shining. You will have perpetual success. Things will move for you. Things will move for you because you have conscience. You are doing things from your heart. That's what he's saying. That's what fasting should produce. You do things from your heart. It comes from inside you because God has touched you. You have received the anointing to ignore people you should ignore. And the anointing to do what you should do. So you have perpetual success, success, permanent success. It's not today somebody is attacking you. Tomorrow things, are, things goes well with you constantly. Because the four coverings are for you. Continue, continue my dear. Uh -huh. And satisfy your needs. Listen, 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 listen. You will receive specific directions. That's what fasting produces. This kind of fasting. You receive constant direction from the Lord. You never make mistakes. You receive anointing for wisdom. Ability to make the right choice at all times and in all places. That's what wisdom is. Please write that down. That's a powerful key. Let's remind ourselves of it. Wisdom is the ability to make the right choices at all times and in all places. And then the Lord will satisfy you, which means you will never lack any good thing. You will live in luxury. Fasting should lead to luxury, to a luxurious lifestyle. As it is in heaven. Continue. Yes. And make your bones strong. You will have perfect healing. God, fasting return you back to a teenager kind of life and mentality. I'm serious. You will receive healing physically. The spiritual thing you are doing in fasting, 
becomes a physical thing you feel in your body. Please write that down. The supernatural thing you do in fasting will become the tangible thing you experience in your physical body for beauty and for health. God gives you health and beauty. They go hand in hand. There's nothing like I'm healthy, but I'm ugly. There's nothing like that. Please write that down. There is nothing like I'm healthy, but I'm ugly. It's always health goes with beauty. There's no ugly angel. Please write that down. There is no ugly angel. I hope you know this by fact. So if God gives you health, he gives you beauty. It goes hand in hand. If he gives you beauty, he gives you health. Continue. That's what it means, making your bones strong. And of course, too, it also implies repair work. When you fast, your mind is repaired and restored. Your body is repaired and restored back to health and beauty. Hallelujah! There's nothing like I fast and I'm broke. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like I fast and I'm still broke. No. See, what we are reading also talks about giving. While you are fasting, you should sow. Because fasting is sacrifice on the altar. So for 40 days, we will be doing sacrifice on the altar through Lent, through the practice of this kind of fasting and prayer. You lay your life on the altar and you lay it as a gift. As a sacrifice on the altar, you also lay money or material resources as a sacrifice on the altar. So it means by the time you finish this kind of fasting with yourself laying on the altar and your gift with you, and then you have this humility. You have the word of God going on. You are smart. You're following all these principles in Isaiah. What happens? By the time you finish that kind of fasting, the result is already waiting for you. Continue, continue, my dear. Oh, beauty, healthy, satisfaction guaranteed, green all the time, refreshing all the time, always nice. It shows that good things surrounds you. That's the meaning of it. This kind of fasting produces good things surround me. In fact, you should say that. Please say it right now. I am surrounded by good things. Say it. I am surrounded by good things. Yeah. That's what this kind of fasting produces. I am surrounded by good things continually. I am constantly being upgraded, not downgraded. See, you guys are enjoying seeing. I will do a video after a few minutes or a few hours, which will involve editing and so on. The video is out for you to enjoy. Why? Because I have the fastest internet network in Kansas, what we call Gigablast. It costs money, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Just like that, it's on. If I record a 30-minute broadcast, in two, three minutes, you should have it. You should be in the internet. Why? I have a super, super, super high charge internet. Victoria said money, money make, money make life easy. <laughs> Money make life easy. 
Continue, 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 continue. Like a spring of water, huh? whose water never fail. Water never fail. It means you can never fail. Everybody else can go broke. Everybody else can fail. The devil can attack those people. They can never attack you. They are not allowed to even come near you. There is a restraining order on Lucifer, on every wicked human being, on every demon. There is a restraining. This kind of fasting produces restraining orders on devils. Please, 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 will you, will somebody remind me to do like a three minutes broadcast on how to put restraining orders on devils and wicked people? That should be the topic. How to put restraining order on devils and wicked people. We need to take it out of here. This kind of fasting put a restraining, in fact, it, it releases, um, what do we call it? When the police is searching for a criminal, what do we call it? There is, is it there is, there is something that they put out for the person. What do we call it? A warrant. A warrant, yeah. There is a warrant for the person. When you are doing this kind of fasting, a warrant is released against all your enemies, including Lucifer. A warrant is released. And by the time that you are through with the fasting at 6 p.m. your local time, what happened? It, put, it puts a restraining order on the devil against not to come near you forever and ever and ever. And the more you, you do this kind of exercises, the more you have these kind of things happening. The more it tightens the restraining order. They will be looking at you from afar and hits you, but cannot do anything about it. Let, yeah. Uh -huh. Let my enemies hit me as long as they fear me. That's what you should be saying. Let my enemies hit me as long as they fear me. They can hit you, but they cannot do anything about it. Lions stood far away and looked at the a bull elephant that killed many lions the night before. A bull, a bull elephant killed, just stampeded a lot of lions and killed them. And the remaining lions fled for their lives. In the, in the daylight, they stood far away and watched as the, as the bull elephant is grazing, drinking water, having fun, eating fruit and getting drunk. I'm serious. Elephants get drunk. Don't you know that? They get drunk. Some of the fruit they eat make them drunk because it has potent, high quality rum in it. It's like a mixture of rum, brandy, whiskey, and all kind of stuff mixed together. You see the elephant wobbling from side to side. Don't let that fool you. Try to go near it. It will kill you. And there's nothing the lions can do about it. They hit, they hit the blood bull, but there's nothing they can do about it. Because it has the final say. <laughs> the one that I hate the most is the rhinoceros with more than one horn. So what kind of rubbish is this? This one, this, this one is this one is a terrorist from hell. You seen those, you see those humongous rhinoceros. Instead of just one horn, one horn can do the job. They have more than one. I'm like, what are they doing with more than one horn? Gosh, this is a real beast. That's what we call beast. The beast master. And lions look at them from afar and they can do nothing about it. Keep, keep reading, keep reading. And, and I want your enemies to look at you from afar, complain, whine, and there is nothing they can do about it. In fact, you, your name will be banished from being brought up in the circle of witchcraft. I hope you know that. They will tell anyone who ever bring your name to any circle of darkness 
will be killed. That person will be offered in your place. I'm serious. This kind of fasting, this, this yeah, this kind of fasting makes devils to have a meeting concerning you, and at the end of the meeting, it will be said that nobody should ever bring up your name in any circle or any meeting. If you dare bring up this person's name, you will be punished by death. I hope you know that that is why in serious meetings of wickedness, they don't bring up the name of Jesus. I hope you know that. They call him that man because he fooled them. They don't even call him that God. They call him that man because he fooled them that he was just a man and really he was a real man. So they call him that man. They don't call him Jesus because it's punishable by death to mention his name in that circle. Because do you know what is going to happen when you mention the name of Jesus, that place goes down. That's why some angels do not mention their names. No matter how many times they come to you to give you a word from heaven, they will never mention their name. Unless you want the whole nation to sink. Do you know that? The mentioning of a name of some bad, I'm talking of God's angels, I call them bad boys. Those bad boys and bad girls, because they don't have no, we don't talk about angels in terms of male or female. Those, those creatures, there are some of them whose, their name has so much power that if they mention their name, earthquake begins that will sink nations. So that's why they don't even mention their names. That's why sometimes you ask an angel, what is your name? He said, why are you asking for my name? Because my name is amazing. My name is too tough. It will not just kill you, it will, it will wipe out this entire region. That's why angels don't mention their names. Because power is encoded in their names. In this kind of fasting, power will be encoded in your name. Your name will now carry power. If your name is mentioned, earthquake begins. Hurricane comes. Tsunami comes. So nobody mention your names. Do you think that demons do not want to be alive? Your name is mentioned and angels rush from nowhere and begin to change them and take them into the darkest cave where they will never see the light of days until Jesus returns. Who want to go into those places? So your name must never be mentioned. God wants to put power in your name. When your name is mentioned, things begin to happen. Continue reading. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You see? Things that have been standing for a long time, nobody built it. Land that you purchased, nobody built it. Houses people do not want to give you that belong to you, they will give it to you. They say, we don't want your trouble. Take it. We are going to court to settle this. You have it. Take it. Go. Go in peace. Leave us in peace. Thank you very much. Please go, 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 go. Let's do it like African women do it. Please go, 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 go. Bad husband. <laughs> <laughs> Things that have been standing. You cannot purchase a house. You start purchasing houses. What your parent could not do, ancient ruins will be built. You begin to be the one that repay things, that build things. Things that couldn't be done by any member of your family begin to be done by you. And they begin to go about to find out where do you get the power and the money to do it. It's none of your business where I got the money. It's none of your business where I got the power. And then useless men and, and women want to come and marry you. At that point, you tell them, thank you, I've already tried it. You are not invited. 
continue, continue reading, continue reading. You shall rise up. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. Many generations could not do anything. They left the foundation to die. Now you are the one that make noise. You raise a new, you start a new history. That's what it means. You are going to raise the real foundation. What others could not raise, you raise it. You begin to build hospital, begin to put up things, business booms, money booms. You become famous. You become a builder. Real fasting turn you into a builder. First class. Continue, my dear. You shall be called the repairer of the breach. The repairer. Continue. The restorer of streets to live in. See? Amen. See? Is that the end? Yes. See? You become a builder, restorer. You, became, you begin to do those kind of business. That's what real fasting does. Not ceremony. Shante, jump into it. Period. If you turn fasting, arms giving, all these things, just for a show, you are not getting anything out of it. Continue, my dear. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you. Mm -hmm. The hypocrites do mm -hmm. in the synagogue mm -hmm. streets, so that they may be praised by others. Okay. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. Mm -hmm. Say, see what he's saying? Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. There are times that what you do has to be seen publicly. There are also times that what you do should not be seen publicly. It's done quietly. Continue. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Mm -hmm. So that your alms may be done in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Okay, giving alms is part of fasting. Don't give alms to everywhere. You must have one place you give your alms. Continue. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray. See? Uh -huh. Whenever you pray, continue. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door. Mm -hmm. Pray to your father. Mm -hmm. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Okay. You see this? Prayer should be with expectation. Real prayers are done in secret between you and God. There are people who cannot pray by themselves. They love to pray for others to see them to to see to show that they, they are praying. I don't like that. When when all this is a show, it's not real. You are doing it for political reason. You are doing it for family and cultural reason. You don't believe in any of that. You get no reward. That's what that's what God is saying. Real fasting must go with prayer. With secret prayers. Prayer you do in secret. Prayer that you don't announce to people. I'm praying. Don't talk to me. I'm praying. Don't you know I'm fasting. Now. Carry on the business of life. While you are carrying on the business of God. At the same time. Go, go, go ahead my dear. Go ahead. And whenever you fast. Do not look simple. When you fast, don't 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 make yourself let people know you are fasting, so as to gain respect. Be normal. Take your bath, cause like some people, if they want to fast, they won't even brush their teeth. 
they will, they, 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 I personally, let me tell you what I do. I don't go before God's presence without looking good. I like to look good, smell good for him. Why? Because I know the protocols of kings. Some people tell, oh, don't brush, don't, don't brush your teeth. Don't, don't be, just, just go and stay like that before God. No, 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 no. You can fast while you're at your job. God knows you're fasting. During your lunch break, you, you listen a little bit to a broadcast or read a little bit of the gospel of the day or any portion assigned for the day. I said, God, I'm here. I'm for you. Short and simple. Don't need to be long prayers. You don't need to blast out in tongues and gim gim all the boom, boom, boom. No. Mean it. Mean what you say and say what you mean. Mean it and expect to have results. That's all. Doesn't matter how you do it. Continue, my dear. Or they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Uh -huh. truly, I tell, truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. They have already received their rewards. See that? Make this real. Make it personal. Leave the shoe out of your practice of devotion to God. Please write that down as a powerful key. Leave the shoe out of the practice of devotion to God. Leave the shoe. Make this real. Make it personal. We are stopping there for tonight. I am asking God to make this 40 days fasting and prayer to mean a lot for you. At the end, you will hear a knock on your door and the packages will start coming. Your phone will ring and the opportunities will start knocking. Let me tell you something. I'm now prophesying to you. You have been knocking on doors. Now doors will be knocking on you. Please write that down. You have been knocking on doors. Now doors will come knocking on you. You've been looking for money. Now money will come looking for you. You've been struggling to exist. Opportunities will come knocking for you. I'm calling you by name. That is going to happen to you. During this Lent, I'm not going to be doing any preaching or teaching. The days we meet, we are going to spend some time to pray and to speak to God. I want you tonight to lift up your hand and say to God, I am ready. I am ready. That's all you should say. Just say, I'm ready. Just say it. Let him hear you. Lord, I'm ready. Ready. I am ready. God, I'm ready. That's all. I am ready. Lord. There you go. So I will see you all on Friday at 12 noon and at 7 p.m. Central Time, which is 1 o'clock East Coast and 8 p.m. East Coast. Then 10 a.m. West Coast and 5 p.m. West Coast. I'll see you then. See, if you've never taken things strict, take it strict this time. Make this work for you. I am here to help you. If you don't know how to do those things, follow me. Good night. Good night, Bishop. Good night, Bishop. Good night. Good night. Thank you.